As a monk practicing samatha or deep samadhi states where the mind is crystal clear and silent and wide awake was very powerful and very helpful to me. But as a lay person surrounded by distractions, having lots of responsibilities, you just may not be able to manage that sort of thing. Consequently, one of the best things a lay person living in the world can do, one of the best spiritual practices, is the cultivation of mindfulness. Mindfulness being being in the present moment, observing yourself as though you are observing somebody else, observing your thoughts, your speech, and your actions, so that you are not just an automaton, that you're not just on automatic pilot acting out your habits and your conditioning. Another powerful practice is the cultivation of a certain amount of austerity, which means not necessarily sleeping on beds of nails, but being okay with being uncomfortable. If you can be okay when you're uncomfortable, you can be okay at other times also. If you can be happy when your, your stomach is empty, or you're cold, or you're hot, or you have no money, or you're alone in the world, if you can be happy under those circumstances, then you can be happy under just about any circumstances. And a spiritual life is really um, a matter of cultivating happiness. When it comes to effective spiritual practice, there's really three different practices that I do that um, I think work the best. The first two are just regular Essen Goink of Vipassana style techniques, uh, focusing on the breath, making sure that your mind can be focused for periods of time. And the second one is the body scanning, getting into sensations and uh, really kind of realizing that the mind is not just in your head, but it's stored throughout your body. And that if we are able to observe without reacting to the different sensations throughout the body, then we can start to unravel a lot of the conditioning. Um, but the third one really is, is kind of the game changer for me that really started taking things to the next level. Um, I realized that through a lot of working with sensations, you can start to become uh, attached to them and start craving certain sensations. Well, not craving the sensations, but what can happen is you start becoming so focused on sensations that transcendence of your mind and your body are, become more difficult. And um, that's when I start getting more into Advaita Vedanta and really this practice of realizing that with everything that I'm focused on, there's still a level of identification with it as myself. And I started focusing on just purely the identification and starting to work on dissolving that, whether it be identification even with subtler realms of consciousness, my ideas of consciousness, or um, certain thoughts or beliefs or um, patterns. And um, working on that little, that, that last part has really been what's made the biggest impact lately. What works for me as a spiritual practice is Hatha Yoga. And by Hatha Yoga, I'm referring to body poses or asanas that are done in a certain sequence with emphasis on the breath and on awareness. Now Hatha Yoga is becoming quite popular in the West these days, but I feel that not everybody practices it how it should be practiced. I feel that Hatha Yoga is more of a psychological practice than a physical one, where the emphasis should be on the mental focus and the use of the body as an object of meditation. If it's confined to a sequence of postures alone, then I don't feel that it's any better than other forms of physical exercise. It's really the state of mind and awareness that you cultivate during the practice that makes it quote unquote spiritual. And the reason why I like Hatha Yoga is that I often find it difficult to meditate, to sit down and to detach from my thoughts and really cultivate that sense of awareness. So due to the physical component of Hatha Yoga, such as the movement and stretching of the limbs and the, the deep breathing, you have that extra stimulus to help you achieve a state of relaxation. And that really does influence the biochemistry and help you shift into a meditative state rather quickly if you are practicing correctly. And at the end of a Hatha Yoga session, you can have a purposeful period of seated meditation or Shavasana to really sink deep into yourself. The best spiritual practice for me is the Goenka style Vipassana because it focuses on the body and for an intellectual like myself often lost in the mind, 
the body provides a great counterpoint. It's very grounded. When you practice this kind of apasana, you realize that the body stores every impression you ever had throughout your whole life because you have all sorts of memories from long ago while scanning the body. Our blind reactions to these impressions create our biases and our karma. The meditation practice digs these out and transforms them through the power of equanimity. Then it becomes possible to see things objectively. The name Vipassana means seeing things as they are, and it lives up to its name, in my opinion. Thank <laughs> you.